Nice. Oh, I did notes today, by the way. Notes? Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me see that precious notes. There's a lot of things that I actually want to talk about because I'm really, you know, I have a lot of feelings about this. So I, um, I, I, I went a little above and beyond. Okay. Just saying. Um, hold them up. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it because, uh, yeah, well, like I said, out of the whole thing, I think it was just fun because we saw this with, with with Mikey. So I feel like I could make a yeah. connection maybe to that. So I think that's what made it more fun. I think it would have been fun to all be together and see it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It was fun, but it didn't make it any better. No, no, <laughs> it didn't. And then that was the thing. I just, I... I, there was a lot of disappointing things for me about this year, and all of you know this, but I would say that the biggest disappointment was this film. So, <laughs> um, wow, that's huge. That is pretty huge. One, two, three, four. Oh, you did it on purpose. You're such a shit. Okay, and Doug's so... editing the podcast today. Um... <laughs> no, he doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, Doug's version of editing is plugging it in and saying it's done. Yeah, basically, I'm like, oh, well, uh, intro and outro are there. Doug only knows how to do things raw. But anyways, um... <laughs> This is Slashers, your favorite horror podcast about your favorite horror media. It is I, Mikey, here with my very loving co-hosts and cohorts. I missed a term, but I forgot what it was. It's been a while. Um, I'm here, joined by the lovely, illustrious Aid and Doug. Say hi to the mutant goons from beyond. Aid and Doug, in alphabetical order, please. Oh, well, hey guys. Hey, y'all. It's Aid. Um, yay. Yeah. Hey. hey. Hey, mutant goons from beyond. It's Doug. I'm back. And uh, this time, uh, we're going to piss in the pot. But it's not me doing the piss. I don't know what that means. But this month, we are highlighting Mothers in Horror. Why? Because this is the month of Mother's Day. Everyone, you know, don't forget to tell your mom Mother's Day unless, you know, she's... Not She's around. no longer with us. Yeah. No longer with us <laughs> in different terms. In that case, I apologize. Um, yeah, mommy's with the maggots now. Oh my mommy's god. Mommy's with which is my shirt. Mommy's with the maggots now. I'm telling yeah. you, uh, Mikey's it. version is better. Yeah, my version will get <laughs> will get beeped. Um yes. so uh go ahead. No, yes, this kicks off our um our May month of Mother's Day. Uh themed horror so you know i thought that we would or you know i just think that we should kind of kick it off and be like hey ma um do we like our mothers do all of us like our moms i think oh, we my do. mom's dope as fuck um <laughs> i really enjoy my mom um i always tell her on mother's day thanks for keeping me alive um happy mother's day and she's also the reason why I got into horror, even though she'll deny it, saying that she didn't show me these movies when I was too young to watch them. But either way, she's just a really cool mom. What about you, Doug? Yeah, my mom's my mom's cool. It was uh, she had a choice; she had a coat hanger or me, and she decided with me. So say kudos to you, mom. Aww. Aww. I mean, I think all of her moms had that choice, but you know. What a lovely story, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and of course. I Adrian, yeah. we know you're a mom, fan of the show, lovely woman, beautiful she, woman. Go ahead and, and fan her nuts. <laughs> yeah, fanning my mother's nuts. Yeah, no, I love my mom. Like, I do, I don't see her enough. And it's probably for good reason, because literally every time I see her, I just have shit to bitch about. So she probably yeah. avoids me for that reason. But uh, <laughs> I'm really excited because we're actually going to do a girl's day at Disney in June for my birthday. So I'm really excited about that with my with our cousin Trudy. And we're going to get a hotel room. It's going to be a girl's day. I'm so excited about this. So I can drink around the world at Epcot and like live my best life. I'm so happy. Man, well, everyone's getting their nuts fan that day. 
<laughs> yeah, everyone's going to fan their labias. That sounds very sexist, but we'll save that for another time. So this is... Well, it's Mother's Day. We have labias. Oh, wow. Right? You're going to take that stance? All women have <laughs> labias, Aid? Wow. You're um, gross. Anyways, um... The cool thing about this month is this is a month highlighting mothers in horror, but we're not doing the typical Mother's Day, Rosemary's Baby. We're actually doing movies that you wouldn't buy just the cover, think are mother's movies, but they have a strong mother presence. So today we are going to be doing the new Evil Dead Rise. It just came out. Um, we'll probably get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet and you really want to see it, maybe hold off until you watch it. Or if you just don't care, give it a listen. Before we begin... We always like to go around the room and say, have you guys seen anything lately that's worth mentioning? Mm. I'll go I've, first. I've seen a bit um, here. You go for it, Mikey. Well, so I'm answering for both of us because if y'all don't know, Doug and I spent a lovely weekend together um, in Cabo St. Lucas, a.k.a. L.A. And um, I brought some movies over and we saw quite a bit. We saw The Fear from the 90s. We saw superstition from the 80s or the 90s one of those um oh uh, that's like early 80s 80s um and then we saw uh i finally got someone to watch streetwalker with my favorite movie that came out this year um which i told doug i think was released and made by the devil because there's no track of any of the filmmakers online or actresses um did we see anything else besides evil dead rose uh no, that, I, I believe that's all. we we watched a lot because we were when you came over it was um bing bang boom bing bang boom it was nonstop so <laughs> yeah we were a living pinball machine um oh yeah and your was there hi Ira um Adrian did you see anything yes I saw Renfield actually and I enjoyed it a lot Ooh, like, maybe we'll I do think, a bonus yeah we should because Renfield honestly is worth talking about. It was better than anything that we're about to talk about today. So <laughs> I, I, uh, oh. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about that one. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually watching it after this show, um, and I believe Austin saw it too, so maybe he can join us. Um, and then Doug, besides our lovely weekend together, did you watch anything afterwards, or were you just crying? Uh, it's gonna coming coming back. <laughs> I was crying. I was throwing myself in a wood chipper. I was like, Mikey's gone. What am I going to do with my life? I know. So. Well, <laughs> yesterday <clears throat> I did watch a new, well, new to me. Um, it's on Shudder. It's called Kids vs. Aliens. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet. I think it was good. If you like Psycho Gorman, it's kind of that same feeling. Um, but it really should have just been called Aliens versus My Sister. Because the kids don't really do anything. It's like the teenage sister that whoops everybody's ass. Whatever. I don't think that's a spoiler. Um, but anyways, <laughs> thanks for the quick recap, everybody. Today, we are here to discuss 2023's Evil Dead Rise. Enter trailer music here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> And actually, it is pretty cool because just so you guys know, we have three levels of enjoyment included in this episode today. Um, you can guess who uh, is on the opposite side of the spectrum of liking the movie, but who liked it, Douglas or myself, to be continued. This movie was directed by Lee Cronin, not to be confused with Lee Cronenberg, who does not exist and is not a Cronenberg member of the family. Um, and the budget was $19 million dollars. So far, because this is what, like, the first week it's out, it's gross 44.5 yeah. million. So regardless if you like the movie or not, this is a good win for horror. Um, it made 10.3 million on the first day and 2.5 million from the Thursday night previews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to think. I was like, did I see it Thursday or Friday? Yeah. Did we, did right. we see it Friday? Uh, we saw it uh, Friday, yeah. Because okay. you came on Thursday. We We saw it Friday, so. I came twice on Thursday. Um, but oh yeah, that hot tub was Mikey. still has to be cleaned. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the comedy podcast. Let me be comedy. Ah. <laughs> um, competition. April in general. The Pope's Exorcist. Salem's Not. Salem's Lot. Not not. Um, and Renfield. 
Um, so the Pope's exorcist looks like shit. Salem's Lot, is that a new one? Yeah, I saw, I kept hearing about that, but I didn't know what that was. And I'm like, well, it's a Stephen that, King story. I think they, um, yeah, but they delayed it, I think. I don't think it came out. Did it yeah. come out? I don't know. If it came, it, it was a. Uh... It was Go ahead, it done. Go ahead and oh my goodness! Wah, wah. Yeah, it, was, it was just air. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little no. poof, and it was gone. <laughs> yeah. Now the rest of the year, in regards to competition, or shall we say, neighboring horror films, because we don't like to put horror films against each other. We're here to love each other. January to March, Scream Six, Knock at the Cabin, Skin and Marinka Dinky Dink, Me Three Gin, Infinity Pool, Sick, Swallowed, Mean Spirited. They wait in the dark. Fear. Bo is afraid. The boogeyman. The blackening. That sounds like Mr. Movie Pound. Um, <laughs> Runtime. 97 minutes. We said it's directed by Lee Cronin, but it's also written by Lee Cronin. Produced by Rob Teppert, New Line Cinema, and the executive producer is Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. You'd think they'd know better. Did they produce the remake? They did, yeah. Yes, yeah. Hmm, I wonder what changed. Anywho, New Line Cinema. <laughs> Money. Is Scream New Line Cinema also? You can tell I didn't write these notes. No, anymore. no. Nightmare on Elm Street is usually like New Line Cinema. I would, you that's know, what and, it is. And that's what I was like, okay, so how are they a production company? Because I thought they went under, so I'm a little confused by all of that. But they were one of the production companies that uh, funded this. And so huh. I, yeah, I was, in, I thought that was interesting. When I saw New Line, I was excited. I'm like, okay, because when you think of New Line, you think of horror. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we'll see. Um, as far as the cast goes, we have Lee Sullivan as Beth, Alyssa Sutherland as Ellie, Morgan Davies as Danny, Gabriel Eccles as Bridget, Neil Fisher as Cassie, or Nell Fisher, excuse me, as Cassie, Richard Crouchley as Caleb, and everyone else is not important. Um, okay. Oops. Sorry, everyone. I was connected to a mobile hotspot and not my Wi-Fi, but I have since resolved the issue, and we may continue. Now, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Recapitation. Yeah. <laughs> a just reunion. Just like this movie, a big dis disappointing appointment today. <laughs> just like this movie, a mess. But unlike the movie, I am fixing it. Um, okay. A reunion between two estranged sisters gets cut short by the rise of flesh-possessing demons thrusting themselves, oh, it, them into a primal battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. imaginable. Um, I guess that's a summary. I don't know. I don't um, know. So I don't think we should do a slay by play since it's brand new. What do you no, think? No, we're not yeah. doing a slay by play. Absolutely okay, perfect. Not. Perfect. Stop yelling at me. Um, okay, so first impressions, everybody, before Hi. you went to the movie theater. What how was your juices juicing when you before you saw this movie? <clears throat> I know Doug was really excited. Me? Oh, I was fucking stoked. I came in my I was pre coming actually. Um mm -hmm. And then Mikey orgasmed before the movie started and made the audience laugh. And some some fat guy in a wheelchair was like, <laughs> "Yeah, um, I try not to get embarrassed, but that was a little embarrassing." Um, story time: Doug and I, and Yahira, and my friend Jake, not Jake from Slashers, my other friend Jake, we went to go see it together, and we sat behind, like you know, where the theaters split between the front and the back and the there's like the railing in front of the second part so we but sat in the, seats, the middle yeah we sat in the seats behind the railing and i was like oh i want popcorn before the movie starts and so i was feeling really good i was looking really good just really sexual energy was exuding from my body and so i thought i would slip through the railing and you know the theater was maybe like three-fourths full I was going to let out a little, uh, 
as I did. Um, I think because of the position that I was in, in regards to my diaphragm, it was forced out a little louder. And it just so happened that when I did that, the theater decided to all take a collective silence together. And you just hear, uh, and um, slowly but surely. No, it was. wasn't like that, Mikey. It was like, it was like, it was like, uh, <laughs> and everyone started laughing. The, the one guy behind us is like, did you just hear what the N word said? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, my friend that went with me to get popcorn uh, and I quickly walked away and he was like, Jesus, could you have done that any louder? And I was like, I didn't mean to. So it's just, it's what I do now. I orgasm at theaters. You come at the theater. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, it went out good for Pee Wee. <laughs> oh my God. That was a park, not a theater. Um, Adrian, what was your level of excitement before you saw this movie? Did you come oh my, with everybody else? I I guess I pre come, but I mean, I didn't make any noise. Um, then they never I, 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 yeah, well, I was actually really excited. I've been waiting for this since 2013. We were supposed to get a sequel back in the day from my future husband. And for some reason, it never came to fruition. And I still can't believe it's been 10 fucking years because I feel like I just went and saw that movie theater. In fact, I took my cousins to see it um, because I was, you know, I think I was single back then. And I was like, ah, uh, let me take my cousins to see this movie. <laughs> and, you know, um, I got a parking ticket that night, actually. Mm. That was a different story. And that was <laughs> I parked in a parallel parking spot that was not available for parking at that time. But anyways. Um, no, I was actually really excited to see it. I couldn't wait to see it. I, I bitched at Dan all week that we're not doing anything this weekend except for see Evil Dead. <laughs> and it was nice of him. He actually surprised me. He bought tickets for Saturday's showing and he didn't tell me until the last minute. He was like, oh, I got his tickets. And I was like, yeah. Aww. So How I was sweet. actually surprised about that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So that was I... that. I think I discussed this in an earlier episode where we talked about the trailer. I was apprehensive and I should trust my maternal instincts on this Mother's Month because I thought two things were going to happen. Um, one, I was like, oh, she doesn't really look like a deadite, but also maybe she's not done, you know, fully transforming into a deadite. And two, I was like, it takes place in a high-rise apartment, which is always cool, but I don't really see them using it to its fullest advantage based off the trailer yeah and I was correct in both so I'm sorry I have some like sixth sense that's to see things in commercials um so the movie comes we don't but we watch it anyways and we'll start with Doug on the pos the positive side of things we bring you Doug so maybe it was just me, but I was really excited. And it sounds like I'm recording from my phone, which I am. I'm sitting in a car right now, um, going to job number two. But uh, yeah, so here's the thing. Like, I was super excited for this. So I don't know if I was wearing rose-tinted glasses. But the thing is, um, and, and I put it into perspective, when I watched this movie, um, it, it did feel like an Evil Dead film. Um, but I actually felt like this felt like a Lucio Fulci movie kind of like a new era one um and i love lucio fulci so yeah. that's what it felt like and the thing is um i really like the mom i think she did a really good job because out of all the evil deads my favorite characters were um were henrietta and cheryl so when it's like that main deadite that's always like taunting people and stuff uh i really enjoyed that and so when i saw this it was it, it was a little slower than all the other evil deads but i don't think it's as is as, as, um what's the way to put it here maybe i was fanning my nuts too much but in my head i was hoping okay here's what i'll say like i enjoyed the movie I'll, i want to i'm gonna go watch it again tomorrow um but what i had in my head that i would have actually loved um is that you know how there's kids in the movie well, I thought they were going to utilize that more to its potential. Like, for example, you see the little girl cutting the doll head off and making, like, a spear. Um, I was hoping it would be more like the Deadites versus Home Alone. So I thought these kids were going to, like, 
kill the deadites with the mom and all that like, by using like, toasters, blenders, vacuum cleaners, uh, you know, makeshift stuff that kids would use in an apartment. Uh, but it doesn't get like that. It just kind of gets like, oh, you know, what's the point of them being kids? You know what I mean? It's like, I thought there was going to be some stuff where they're fighting back with toasters on a stick or something or throwing toasters in the bathtub or, you know, shooting marbles out of a vacuum cleaner. Um, but overall, like, I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's probably one of the slower Evil Dead movies. Um, but then again, I have such a weird taste because my favorite ones are Evil Dead 2 and, uh, Actually, I, I've been coming more and more to, like, Army of Darkness, so, you know, take that as you will. <laughs> I feel like everybody loves Army of Darkness, though. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a guy's movie. Like, even Dan, like, well, he's been wanting to see that one. And I know, I know, knowing him, that he would enjoy that Army of Darkness. And I think that's that's more of, like, the, leans more into the com- comedy of the franchise and just sort of, you know, the silliness of it all, but it still, you know, has is gruesome and scary, which I think is, is a great combination because when you talk about this friendship, when you talk about Evil Dead and the entire franchise in general, like, I think that what you always, when you think of Evil Dead, you think of Ash, you think of Chainsaw, you think of uh, Deadites, and you think of that eerie kind of funny, you know what I mean? Like, they're scary but they're also kind of like doll-like in the way and it's like a marionette kind of puppet the way that they move and i i don't know like those are the things that are endearing to the franchise but they're still disgusting and they're horrific and like when you think of the first evil dead you always remember the pencil and the ankle right yeah i can't think of another thing more visceral in my memory as a kid and seeing that part in the movie and my mom getting so mad and shutting it off because my uncle rented it for us. <laughs> yeah, that or like the, the close-up. Sl- That's what was so, yeah, I, I mean, I love the original Evil Dead as well, too. And I remember, too, the, uh, the I always thought that was the difference with it. It's like, it focuses on the slow girl, like when the Jedi girl's like biting her hand off and stuff. And it's like, it's like a solid 30 seconds of her just going, bleh, 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 and like it's slow gore and shooting oatmeal and cum and, and milk or whatever she shoots out of her mouth so Mm. yeah yeah Yeah, and you know and with this one i you know and that's the thing i expected i expected this to surpass 2013 because 2013 set the precedent of what a good reboot with this franchise could could be yeah i was gonna say what i uh... I felt the only part I felt a little underwhelmed with, and I was wishing it was longer because it could have went to something, was the ending. Like when they all kind of do the thing and kind of DP and gangbang each other to go into that this yeah. tentacle monster. Um, yeah. And then oh. it goes down into the garage. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. Oh, oops, shit. Am I spoiling things? No, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. this is the part this... where we're spoiling things, everybody. So turn it off if you don't want to hear it. Yeah. No, but you can spoil. That's the whole point of this. This episode, this episode is full of spoilers, everyone. So if you still haven't seen it, please don't listen to this because yeah. I don't like my biggest thing was I didn't want people to listen to my opinion and you let that like, you know, it, yeah, impact them, impact how mm-hmm. they view it. Go and see yeah. it and think what you think. No one's going to hate you. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, just to go in on that, like I said, maybe I was a little underwhelmed on the ending. Um, I know you guys will probably explain on that here. Um, since I'm on a little bit of a time crunch, but I was the ending to the 2013 one is so much more like in epic. your face and fuck you and epic. It's like like when you watch the 2013 one, you get excited because you know it's like oh that fucking ending is coming up and that's like the most badass thing in a while. And uh, then you watch this one. I was I was expecting something to that level, but I feel like it didn't get there. But yeah. <laughs> my favorite part of the ending was the mom the mom's head uh talking back to her in the wood chip right i thought that was so fucking livid and she's you know what i mean i thought that was so cool like yeah because it goes back to like the linda from part two when he ash like chainsaws her head in the vice grip so there's it's an homage to that and then the wood chipper so you know what i mean like i i really enjoyed the ending but it didn't hold a candle to the um the brutalness of the ending to the face chainsaw face fucking in in the 2013 one yeah um so and it's such a disservice that 2013 came out in 2013 to this movie because it did it hit every point and 
There's people that like Evil Dead. There's people like Evil Dead 2. And the reason why I think people don't like Evil Dead 2 for the ones that prefer Evil Dead 1, for me anyways, and maybe people can identify it, is when I saw the first Evil Dead, it was truly scary. It wasn't funny. I didn't think it was comedic. There was some, like, parts where there's taunting. But as a kid, you're not like, oh, haha, they're messed up. You're like, that shit's scary. And then the pencil to the angle thing, that's fucked up, too. And then we get the second one, which is the same thing, but it takes a comedic tone. And you're like, no, that's I didn't like that movie because it was comedic. I like it because it was scary. Like, I want the scary back. And so that's my theory of why people don't like the like why some people identify with the first one, not the second one. That's why I prefer the first one. And so when we get into 2013, we still we get what I loved from the first one. We get the brutalness. We get the intensity we get the assault of the senses and like the ankle and the pencil to the ankle you have many parts not just one part but many parts where that you think of that part fucking me up like when she has to rip her arm off and when it's stuck under the car when the girl's cutting her face into um there's a couple of parts that were like oh with the needle in the eye Fulci, Mm -hmm. for example like i really feel that paid more homage to Fulci than anything yeah, and that was that was um, that was relentless. Like she's stabbing him in the eye, breaking mm-hmm. his glasses. There were so many. I can't even yeah. tell you how much I will fan my nuts to that film. How it made. Yeah, me. no, the pencil, the the uh, the needle in the eye. That stuff's good. But what I felt, like, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Manhattan Baby. That's kind of what this reminded me of with uh, the the because what I thought. Uh, now, see, I wish I was stoned when I watched this, but I would have probably been freaking the fuck out when. Uh, Because there is some really creepy stuff in Evil Dead Rise. Um, When she's like peeping through the people, she's like, come on now, let mommy in. Yeah. Like, I thought that was super creepy. (laughs) (laughs) Talk talk to that perfectly. (laughs) Open for mom and dad. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Well, that actually brings me to my next point uh, about this. Because I did find an article that was talking about her and the people and Alyssa Sutherland, because I will say that one of the positives for me was Alyssa Sutherland's performance, right? Oh, yeah. She carried it as much as she could. She knocked it out of the park. She did carry the film. Let's just say it for what it is. She carried the film. I don't think that anybody else in the movie did it any better or or stood out any any worse or or more than she did. And 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 that's the problem. Because I really feel like with all of the evil deads, the characters, you all get to know them, you get to love them, right? And that's why it gets, well, aside from part two. <laughs> Actually, no, part two, yes. I mean, part two, like, it is, part two, okay, Evil Dead 2 does get scary. And one of my scariest parts is when she can't find the hand, and then the hand is, like, coming, you know what I mean? I, but you, you're endeared to these characters. You start to like these characters. I mean, Doug even loves Henrietta, for Christ's sake. <laughs> so, my thing is, where was the love for any of the characters in this film? I think that what the director or the writers were going for, but they were banking on, was that the fact that it, fact of the matter is that we should feel even more scared because there are children involved. Yeah. But I did not. I didn't like any of these kids. I didn't give a fuck about it. No. no. These are Gen Z kids. And, and the kid playing the record, I'm like, are you fucking stupid? Like, quit sitting there with your stupid ass face. Well, they well they did get pizza, so that was Henrietta's pizza. I don't know if you caught that. Oh yeah, so, on the yeah. box it said like Henrietta's pizza. Um, yeah, and then the girl who wanted to protest, I'm like, yeah, can this girl just die already? She's a she's a bitch to everybody. So yeah, I will say I. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say I will say my 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 official like stance on it is it's fine as a movie. It's fine as Evil Dead. I don't like it as Evil Dead because. Even though Alyssa Sutherland did great, she doesn't look like a deadite. She looks like more like something that would be in an exorcism movie. Um, she is the only character that I really cared for because she had so much depth. Maybe it's just some actresses and actors have that power. Maybe yeah. she does and no one else did. Um, but there was no brutality at all. I yeah. thought, everybody thought, the cheese grater was going to be the scene mm-hmm. that you think of when you think of Evil Dead Rise. <laughs> It's not gross at all. It's CGI, and it looks like they put jelly on her leg. Oh, it was so bad. 
That yeah. was the most disappointing moment. Like you're waiting for the cheese grater. You want to see the action. And we've seen this before in Housebound. And Housebound was yeah. more effective. Ugh. Yeah, and that was a comedy. <laughs> and that was a horror comedy. Yeah. And Housebound was way more effective than this fucking... What is yeah. it? Yeah. That when you don't come, blue ball shit? Is that blue what that balls, is? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm thinking about it now, but yeah, they really, they advertised the fuck out of that cheese grater. They even made a poster with the cheese grater on it. And I'm like, I've seen cat scratches that are bloodier than that. And um, yeah. the only one that did get me, I saw they advertised the scissors. And I'm like, okay, the scissors are going to come into play. And that one made me cringe. <laughs> I know it happens on the, on, uh, the mom. But since yeah. since they're going up the nostril, up through the eye, that's always made me cringe. So yeah, I feel like nose and brain stuff in movies is always kind of gross. But honestly, I forgot about it until you just mentioned it. So this might get me canceled in this day and age. But I was a little disappointed that the elevator cables didn't go up her hoo ha, because it even happened in two thousand and thirteen. It's yeah. disturbing. It's effective. It almost works as like a metaphor of like the birth of a deadite. And I feel like they might have wanted to, but they were afraid of getting canceled. And to me, Evil Dead should not be afraid of going or crossing the line because it does. Yeah. And okay. I felt like I felt like it was afraid to do that. Yeah, and, and you want to know what's funny too? I think there was more stuff like that in Ash versus in the TV show. You know what I mean? Like he's fighting mm -hmm. an asshole, like literally, like a, a rectum. Um, and, this, and this is my point. So I made a couple of points because I was. I was talking to someone this weekend and I was it was getting me mad because I really feel like a lot of people look at the first evil dead as misogynist because the tree is raping her, right? And it's hard to watch that scene because yeah. it was very overt. However, what the reboot does with that scene, it's implied. You never see it penetrating her the way you see it yeah. in part one. But also because basically these the, the the demons are are violating you yeah they're violating you and this is a metaphor of how you know specifically women are violated usually because we are assaulted right and so i think that it did a disservice and the only reason i i won yes i think they left it out because of being canceled right they did everything they did they split her legs apart they had her in the elevator hanging but they didn't they didn't do that one scene. And while, no, it's not easy for me to watch when the reboot happens and it's it's kind of spiraling up her leg. I don't know if y'all remember. Yeah. It's like spiraling up her leg and it's going up her dress, but you don't see it the way you see it in, in the old one, which I think is much, much more effective. But at the same time, this is a violation. This is a metaphor of being violated. Like these things are entering inside you and they're changing you. And it's yeah. also a metaphor for motherhood and getting pregnant. And this is another reason I think that this would have been more effective had they had the same thing go on with this one, because there are mothers in this film. You mm -hmm. know, we have a mother of three children. We have a sister who just finds out she's knocked up, even though she's not a groupie. But somebody knocked her up, right? <laughs> and which is fine because I have no problem sleeping with men, men and bands. We know this. But my thing <laughs> is, is well, you know, and I have no problem not getting pregnant either. But that's another story. So my, I'm not trying to be judgmental, ladies. Sorry, but my thing is, is that by keeping that out or not even not even implying it as the way 2013 did. You're basically just looking at this film as another teeny bopper. Let's get the kids in the, in the seats. We don't want to offend anybody. This is not an Evil Dead film. It's just a possession that, movie. It's a possession film. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and, and not only that, but for her to say, call them your titty fucking parasites. Like there is a huge commentary on motherhood here. But as I, I found an article with this man who agrees with me it is uh, and and it's a great article i cited it called evil dead rise disgraces the franchise's good name and it really does but there is um there's pressures on motherhood and it sort of implies either a woman is nothing without her children or society's pressures basically disguised as a slow agonizing petulant hammer to women's heads and i wrote this not the author that we must have children However, as the article even says, the film barely touches on these ideas, but never fully leashes them out. Like, 
there are themes in the 20th. There are themes in all of them. And while Army of Darkness and Evil Dead might not be as deep, okay, the first Evil Dead is, and the reboot, and even in some cases, Ash versus Evil Dead. So I'm just wondering the fuck they were thinking when they they implied the scene, but then they didn't do it. And and I get it. They don't want to show. Yeah, I mean, they could have done it through the mouth, so it's not as sexual, but the concept is still there. Just make it, you can make it gross. Like, you know, maybe she's throwing up while this thing is in her mouth. I don't know. Like, there's just no sense of, like you said, a violation occurring where the demon actually, that's how it gets inside of you. Because we've had it in the past. We don't have it this time. Um Oh, well, she then, did. Now, I can't remember, but did she vomit, uh, the, like, that cum-looking puke? That was, was the that daughter. That was, that was the daughter? daughter? Okay. Yeah. Um, and all of that was CGI. When the daughter's yeah. cutting her face and the things are going, the makeup, everything was fucking CGI. That is not what a dead eye makes. And we yeah. know this. And Doug, you know this. Oh, and yeah. Henrietta, yeah. Was not, Henrietta was not CGI. She so. would never. No, no. no yeah. they wouldn't do that. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing, too. Like, I was really hoping, because the 2013 one was predominantly all uh, practical effects, except a few blood splatter things, but... Yeah. Yeah, even the rain, the blood rain. And mm -hmm. to, to your point about the... I called it the combo deadite. At the end, where the three of them fuse, like, that's a cool concept, but it loses its power when it's CGI. Like, I'm sure this movie had a huge budget. Um maybe it didn't i don't know i think no, Jake it was telling us, yeah we have 19 million fucking dollars and you can't fucking make a puppet that it doesn't have to be life-size but you couldn't even make a puppet yeah like, or bring us back to claymation like that shit yeah wasn't super believable but it was scary like L like that yeah. tree in evil dead too it's like that's a huge prop and yet that still looks better than the little combo uh thing looking thing at the end of this one <laughs> I know. And someone was like, oh, it was the contortionist. And I was like, it looks CGI. I, the yeah. contortionist was probably in the suit, but the faces and everything, whatever. Another thing that I felt they pussied out on was we have kids in this movie. They died. That doesn't make you brave. Like, my thing was, make the little girl a dead-eyed, or if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You don't have to. Um, I thought, and I was like, okay, maybe this is going to turn around for me. When at the very end, she's struggling with Combo Deadite, the sister, um, and she's trying to get the uh, the chainsaw. She can't get it. Um, the little girl sees it. I'm like, bitch, you better pick that chainsaw up and fuck that shit up. I don't care if you're five. That would be awesome. No, she gives it to the aunt. I'm like, no, like this is a missed opportunity. You know how badass it is? Like, every evil dead movie does something new if this one had a little five-year-old fucking shit up with the chainsaw i would have been like okay kudos to you but they didn't do it so i don't know maybe um it just it just seems so safe it, it was. yeah now, now that you think about it there was a lot of those those scenes where it's like i i can't stand it in movies when someone's like about to like if someone's gonna go kill someone and then all of a sudden they're about to do it and they're like hey asshole and they go and they look they look yeah. back and they stop. Like, that happened a lot with the little girl. I'm like, come on, just either yeah. kill the little girl or turn her into a dead eye do something. Yeah, yeah. and you, ha you have to read the article that I found because the guy put it so eloquently, too. I feel like Jake wrote this. If Jake would write <laughs> something, this would be what Jake wrote. And my thing is, is that it it was, it wasn't, it was very disappointing throughout because you would get to a place where they could have done so much and they just, like, backed away. Yeah. And all this and you know what they thought would make this better or they thought that would save it or the saving grace were the homages to the old ones the homage to henrietta and like even other like illusions they made in different horror films throughout it and you know and, and i don't and i just want to put this caveat too because i i was reading a lot of uh reviews about people saying they hated it because they thought it was quote woke i don't know what was woke about this movie no what was, I mean, what, what was woke I, 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 the protesting I, sister. I, I mean, yeah. but that's just like Gen Z now. You know, I mean, that's not yeah. woke. That's culture. I, I would I, say it's probably the 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 older daughter, but that's not a problem. There's kids that are like that, so deal with it. But the girl with the short hair. Yeah. Okay. Who fucking cares? They all look weird now. The kids don't know how to dress. Like, oh get no, over not. It. I mean, oh, it was the probably oldest her looks. one. Uh, so the the oldest daughter. 
with the boy haircut. Sorry, I don't mean to be uh, gender defining, but the one who has a very short haircut, I don't think it was the way she looked. I think it was her lines in terms of like, she's going to a feminist rally. She's making posters, doing what it's like. Yeah, but there's kids out there like that. So just that's like saying you don't want a gay in a movie, but there's gay people out there. It's fine. Like, yeah, Uh, it's so stupid. I mean, it's whatever. And then they're children. Like, stop fucking judging children for that. If we're going to have kids in this movie, they need to be slaughtered. Or like Doug said, they need to save the fucking day. But like, what, what were the, what was the point of having these kids in this movie? If all we're going to do is put CGI all over them and then the little girl be fucking useless. What the point? Because we have to make sure that the aunt and the, I don't know why I'm so angry about this, but we have to make sure that the aunt some sort of like, because the kids are all proxies to her unborn ch- child. So now she feels like she's got to save the day. And then they give her all these stupid fucking lines that are from different evil dead films and she doesn't deliver them properly. And mm. then they make her look like Mia at the end of 2013. I'm like, yeah. why can't we just have Mia back if that's what you're going to fucking do? Like, I just, I can't, I'm so mad. I know she, <laughs> one, she said one line from Army of Darkness. I don't remember what it was though. Oh, yeah. She says it near, or, towards the end. Yeah, Come get yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, that was forced. I didn't care for her. Um, I someone mentioned, oh, I really think it'd be great if Beth, who's this older, who's the the sister that lives, I I would think it'd be cool if Beth meets up with Mia later. I'm like, no, no, don't put her in the same category. Beth's gotta go. Yeah, no. <laughs> Well, here's something I thought, like, I was, because I was so excited and I was, in my mind, like, I visualized how this is going to turn out to, because that's the thing with all, think about it, all the Evil Dead movies, the last 15 minutes of them are always, like, crazy, yeah. um, each and every one, um, but I told Mikey this, and I thought this is what it was going to turn into, and that's why I think, like, I was, I was kind of, like, at the end, like I said, the, the I enjoyed the movie, the ending was underwhelming to me, but there was, I, I liked the, the taunting mom had. But what I was hoping for, and and they, it's just kind of there for one scene where they find the Necronomicon, but there's a hole in the basement. And I thought for sure, like, besides them combining themselves as, like, the final boss, um, that, like, the skeleton priests or something would have came out of the basement, and that would have been, like, the mm. big boss. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the ones who were with the Necronomicon, because there was a giant Jesus cross there. I mean, wouldn't that be yeah. cool if, like, a dead possessed the, gem- the Jesus statue, and there's, like, skeletons, so then you could reference... You know something new because you know the deadites possess like yeah uh, anim- inanimate and dolls stuff. and stuff inanimate yeah. stuff and then you also get skeletons which could reference your nut fanning for army of darkness so i don't know i just thought there was going to be more and i'm like oh that, that's it yeah, yeah I- um and so yeah Hyra liked the movie also i don't think she liked it as much as doug so when i was trying to gauge everybody she took a little while longer to answer than than doug did uh, but she did essentially like it and she was telling us about an article that says that they think they have like three or four more movies lined yeah. up to deal with different books i'm not opposed to it but my thing is learn from what people are saying about this one and try to fix it the next one yeah, and, and this is another issue, too, that I have, because, you know, everyone, like, I think that if Fede Alvarez had done what he would initially wanted to do was basically carry on Mia's story and bring it on from there, if that was something that we could have stepped into, I think that we would have a better, we would have a better um, overall experience with what could have came with Evil Dead. And yeah. and, and honestly, it didn't happen for several reasons, Fatty Alvarez had a different project coming on, but he said that, you know, don't, it's not, it's not buried. It's never buried or whatever. Cause I was reading an article from bloody disgusting a couple of years ago. And he's like, don't lose hope. This can still happen. But then we get this piece of shit. I'm like, God damn it. Fatty. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think I will have... give myself to you right now. If you give <laughs> me another evil dad, I don't care. I don't think, <laughs> I, I think he would seriously be open to it. I think it's a matter of getting Jane Levy to come back. Cause she had such a horrible experience. Uh, not but, with but him. she Yeah. Not with him. Cause she did don't breathe. And that's my yeah. thing is I think that, yeah, obviously doing that film was really difficult. Right. Yeah. Like if you watch any behind the scenes, like she's crying most of the time. It was, it was fucking hard. Yeah. And maybe that's what that's what shows through the screen. That's why everybody loves it so much because we're like, yeah, we know, we know you were suffering, and that's why we love it because we're sick. Oh, but that's the fun thing. Like if you go back and watch the original Evil Dead, all the actors were suffering. That was, you know what I mean? Like the Cheryl, mm-hmm. like look at the behind the scenes. Like she's 
she hits her head on the basement door and she like starts crying and then Sam's like, and eh, I'll be a big baby. Oh. Um <laughs> and then Evil Dead too, when when Ted when Ted Raimi is Henrietta, he, oh, he yeah. went to the hospital, he passed out in the suit, and Sam's would say, eh, don't be a big baby. So well, um Yeah. It comes across like into the actors. You can see it and they're really struggling. And I love like I don't think anything can replicate like how natural that look on uh Mia looks I I had like a steel book from the from the 2013 Evil Dead and it's Mia with like she's look she's really scared on the cover and her eyes are like kind of crossed like that like looks like she's yeah. legit scared you know what I mean you know what image I'm talking about right is it when she's a yeah. Jedi? oh no, no she's when she's no that's when she's getting assaulted she's by the tree scared. yeah and yeah. I have that no, I have the same steel like, book yeah yeah I like that. on the back of it she's like yeah. And, and then, like, that's, she's legit in pain or terror there, so. Yeah, this movie made me want to just watch 2013 to cleanse my palate. Um, but since everything is kind of wrapping up, we've said all that we can say. I mean, say, we've said all that we can say. Um, how do you, how did you feel about the wraparound? Uh, the wraparound, you mean, like, for the, uh, where, the, oh, okay, yeah, the wraparound, that's what The beginning and the end. I, here, here's my opinion on that. I liked, I liked the fake out at the end where you think it's demon vision. You know, it's the mm-hmm. Sam Raimi cam going, but they find out it's a drone. Um, I liked it, but I think it was, it shouldn't have opened that way because I feel like they just did that purposes. It's like, oh, it's Evil Dead show. So here's a cabin, and, and here, here's like the woods. Show, show. We just got to show the audience that this is Evil Dead. Yeah. 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 I was asking Aid, how did you feel about the wraparound story? So the wraparound story was fine, I guess. I I enjoyed how it started. I didn't like how they brought the drone in, though. And also, too, when the head came out of the water, was the head CGI or was the head was off? The head looked nothing like the kid whose head it was oh, on. Yeah. So that yeah. kind of annoyed. Oh, it was me. CGI, yeah. Yeah, and it was just looked stupid. But other than that, like, I mean, it was scary when they showed the ponytail and even when yeah. they dropped the scalp, even Dan was like, oh, shit. And yeah. so we were actually both very excited. But I will say for someone, okay, so Dan, Dan is not um, a horror movie person, right? He only watches them because of me. Yeah. Except for Scream. I don't know why he likes the Scream franchise, but whatever. <laughs> and um, like he he told me the other day, he's like, he, he wakes up in the morning and he looks at me he's like and you know what else about that movie <laughs> he's like he's like usually i get scared at things that you watch like some of the shit he's like the last one you showed me like it was scary to me he's like i wasn't even scared and i even said the same thing i was never once scared yeah there was never a time where i felt scared for the characters or i was worried i was this i, I had anxiety i didn't give a fuck i was like okay what's gonna happen and I kept waiting for something to make me scared of waiting. Like, even with the sister, when they think she dies. Yeah. Like, shouldn't we feel some kind of emotion? Yeah. Nothing. And it feels shit. <laughs> I didn't care that the sister was sitting at the side by crying. Like, no. You know what I was worried about? I was worried about the fucking cat in the vent. That's what I was worried about. That was oh, like- I know. Oh. Oh uh, well, he, let me let me just throw this in here because I gotta get going in a bit. But um, okay, so I don't know if you guys have seen Demons Two, the Lamberto Baba movie. Um, that's very much that's demons in a high rise. People are getting possessed. Now the thing is, that movie had a scene where someone's pet, a pet dog, gets possessed by a demon, and then its teeth come out, and it's really graphic and gory, and then a demon comes out of its spine and starts flying around. I thought they were gonna do something like that with the cat, but the cat just. I don't even think you ever see the cat. Again. You just hear it. You never see the cat, no. Yeah. So I'm like, w- wouldn't it be cool if like a dead eye, a dead eye possessed cat that's talking shit? That would have been cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, they needed us on their creative team. Um, I think the wraparound was better than the actual movie. Uh, the only yeah. thing I didn't like about the wraparound was that I'd said 24 hours earlier or a day earlier because I was like, okay, well, great. Now we know that this is where this is going to end up. They should have just left that part, like left that that text out so we see that girl at the end we're like oh okay she's from the beginning this is how the beginning starts um i will say that the only time i ever felt anything for characters was i was hoping like in the remake or the reboot that uh, Alyssa sutherland's character was a deadite tormenting the kids and i was kind of hoping she was going to turn back to normal and the spirit was going to inhabit beth 
and this table's turned. Because if you remember, Mia is like fucking people up in the first half and then it switches and then the demon goes to other places. I was kind of hoping I was going to do that just because I connected with her so much more. And the only time I actually felt something is when she was attacking the kids. I wasn't like worried about the kids. I was worried she was going to do something that was going to be like, oh, she can't turn back. And then it happened like when she basically, um, I forgot what she did, but she did something that I was like, oh yeah, she's not going to come back to be human. Um, And that was when she gets her leg and her arm blown off. So yeah. So I was like, well, okay, let's go ahead and just kill everybody now. Yeah, it was uneventful to me. I just didn't care. And it didn't make me feel, I don't know. I don't know if it was the setting, I don't know if it was the lighting, I don't know if it was the characters. And then in the same article that I read, he was uh, comparing her smile to the smile from Smile. Like, yeah. how there was, and I'm like, okay, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, the Deadites look horrible. Like, except for the mother, she did a great job because of her acting. But their look, they don't look like Deadites. They look like possessed people. The eyes are CGI for Christ's sake. You can't yeah. fucking CGI the eyes. You that's mm. easy fix. You put a fucking contact in. Like, are you serious? Yeah. I just don't understand the choices that they made and and to and to pass it off as for, for, like all these people going ham on it and so excited. Like, what what I want to know what the fuck they were excited about. Because well, even Doug, Doug is trying to tell us what he's excited about, but he keeps going, but they could have done this. Like, <sighs> Doug Doug is not genuine in his love for it, right? And Ooh. so that's what, that's what, like, and not that Doug is, you know, not, I'm not saying Doug is lying, but I'm just saying, like, Doug's opinion is not, like, fully in on it. So none of us are really fully in on this fucking movie. And so I would really like to discuss, which is why I wanted Austin here, because Austin, for some reason, loves it. Yeah. Well, but Austin grew up in a Christian household. We know this, so maybe that's yeah. no, well. Aid, I don't think you were here when I said it, but I, there was one part that made me cringe. Um, it's when she's splattering all those eggs on the stove. You know how expensive eggs are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was also a commentary on the fact that women's eggs are drying up as we speak, and she's just wasting them away, right? So yeah. I see. She I used see three them. Of them. I see them trying. Oh, she used three of them, see? Yeah. And each one represented one of her titty sucking parasite children. <laughs> yeah. Well, anywho, I don't think we, there's much more we can say without completely digging this movie into the ground <laughs> only for it to come raised up as a deadite. So, Doug, what would you rate this movie? How many slashes out of five? Um, I give it, uh, <laughs> you know, I want to be honest. I, I had a good time, but I think that was because I we, you were here, so it was very, mm. it was more of the camaraderie. Uh, so me and Yahira, and um, I'm sh- I don't even know if he, Jacob, um, not Slash's Jacob, the other Jacob, he was sleeping throughout the whole movie. Um, yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, uh, how, so he how, works how overnight, works? y'all. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I get you know I'll say I'll give it three and a half. Uh, titty sucking out of five. Perfect. Um, we'll go to next down the line because I think AIDS is gonna be pretty low. I give it, I gave it two point five out of five on Letterbox. Um, it's fine. It did what it needed to do, but don't be calling it My Evil Dead. Um, Adrian, it's an abomination and not in a good way. So it gets a negative one if I could give it that. But I'll <laughs> give it a one star. I'm one just. Star. I'm, Ooh. I'm very bitter. I'm very bitter about this movie. Like, I've had a lot of disappointments this year. We've talked about this, but this by far is the biggest one, so. <laughs> well, I mean, it was 10 years waiting for it, because, you know, people were yeah. like, I, I mean, we were walking around Burbank, and I had, an, I had a Henrietta shirt, and people, just random people in the street were like, oh my god, are you gonna go see Evil Dead tonight? Are you so excited? I'm like, yeah, it's been 10 years. I even told one Salvation Army Salvation guy. Army. Said, like, he said, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm coming in my pants about or something. And the guy was like, oh. <laughs> okay, so the only good thing that came from this film is Doug's commentary to the Salvation Army man yes. of Burbank. <laughs> <sighs> but anywho, I think that brings us to a close for this episode. Um, watch it if you want to. Um, Austin loved it. But anyways. <laughs> 
Thank you guys for listening. You can find us on the social medias at Slashers Pod or Mutant Goons from Beyond on Instagram. You can follow Aid on Instagram at Pathologically Aid. You can follow Doug on Instagram at Bizarro. Doug, Doug Bizarro. That Doug Bizarro. Bizarro. Yeah. I, I always, a like. Come on. Okay, you can follow Doug on Instagram at Doug Bizarro. You can follow me at Horror and a Half Shell. You can also buy our merchandise if you want to have super cute t-shirts that me and Doug made a super hot promo to at the gym at slasherspod.redbubble.com. If you want to support us monetarily and get some extra episodes um, a month. Sorry, Doug's distracting me with his nips. Um, you can follow us on patreon.com slash slasherspod for just one dual hair. I think that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another mother of an episode. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah. Oh, on, behalf, right, bye, guys. on behalf of uh, shut the fuck out. On behalf cool. of myself, Adrian, and Douglas Bloom, goodbye and good die. Bye. Insert outro music now. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, that's been fun. That was.